Hello everybody, and I appreciate you obliging me to speak in a language that is not native to this land. I traveled 7,000 kilometers yesterday to get here. That might seem... I now have about 15 minutes not to make that 7,000 kilometers just wasted emissions. About four months ago, I was at an event about this size in a small town of Buchanan, New York, a few miles north of New York City, as one of the single most important power plants for any city in the entire world was being shut off. This is Indian Point Nuclear Plant, um, and it had another 40 years, 60 years to live, and instead it was shut down. There are very few places in America with lots of union jobs left, um, but one of the places you will always find unions in America is at nuclear plants. Nuclear plants are one of the few places where someone with nothing but a high school degree can go and feed a large family with a house and a job for life while supporting a permanently sustainable way of living for the world. And I saw on that day a crowd of about this, of union workers, some with tears in their eyes, because they knew a great crime was happening. I won't forget the words of the head steward of the IBEW local chapter, that is the Electrical Workers Union, who came up to the microphone, and he was angry, and he said, this is a dark day for Buchanan, this is a dark day for New York, and if we can't figure out a way to replace this power, it will be a dark day for the USA. And he was right. Why am I telling you this very depressing speech? That was only four months ago. It's because in four months from now, we do not need to be back here giving that exact same speech with the workers freshly released from their bought silence about this crime. We do not need to be here in four months hearing that speech in German. Four months, what can we do with that time? Well, there is no uh, situation so hopeless you cannot find a next good step forward. On that day in Buchanan, New York, we put up on a long fence line, 1,000 yellow construction helmets to symbolize the 1,000 jobs being lost that day. Seriously, when they turned off the reactor later that day, in the morning, they fired about 900 people. Well, that line of helmets stretching across 100 meters of fence line, it was waving in the breeze. It was making a noise, like, like it was almost like a pile of skulls. And photographers, news people, they couldn't get enough of it. We then saw over the course of the next two weeks, the photo of those yellow helmets show up in a National Geographic article online. It showed up on the Reuters uh, photo wire service. And other, other news media started picking up that image. And they used that image to make stories about how maybe we shouldn't shut off nuclear plants. So there is no point up to December 31st that isn't filled with at least a little bit of hope. Even that horrible day in New York four months ago led to images that sparked a new conversation in the United States about why we should not shut down nuclear plants. So you can bet in California, where I will be in two and a half short weeks, fighting to keep Diablo Canyon nuclear plant open, the last Pacific coastal nuclear plant left, we will keep fighting for that and we will use the images and the connections and the friends we made mourning Indian Point shut down. You guys, you're in the middle. You have more hope than Indian Point, less hope than Diablo Canyon because you have less time. So I want to, in maybe five minutes, say my advice 
on what to do next. Because I've heard that one year ago you were here and there were many more people and now on the eve of a federal election you're here with a smaller crowd and it might feel that you're losing. Here's my recommendation of what to do next. And it's a small story from one hour ago. Uh, my friend and translator, Bjorn, was with me as we walked up and down the Danube River by the plant. On our way to this location, we saw a small village, and I insisted that we stop the car and go look at the church. I don't know why. I thought maybe if we climbed the tower, we could get a beautiful picture of the plant. A beautiful picture can do a lot of convincing that 10 lectures in a row to people who already love nuclear cannot. And so I thought we might be able to get this. We go into the chapel. It was gorgeous, perfect maintenance. The sort of beautiful thing you see all around the world near nuclear plants, because nuclear plants make people in towns rich. So we walked in. We walked in and there was a beautiful old woman sitting on the floor in a beam of sunlight coming in through the window and she was cutting flowers I presume for Sunday service and Bjorn I said you need to ask her what she thinks about her local nuclear plant and Bjorn started a very animated conversation in German as I not speaking German just wandered around as we were leaving to get here because we were late I said to Bjorn, so it sounds like she didn't like the plant. And Bjorn says, no, she loves the plant. She says, where else will we get power? She likes it. She's used to it. Her life was built here. And I said, Bjorn, we didn't get her name. We didn't get her portrait. We didn't tell her story online. And we haven't told the media over here that they need to find the most beautiful little chapel in Swabia and interview a lovely woman who loves her nuclear plant. We didn't do any of that. We rushed here, and I enjoyed standing and listening to information about nuclear energy. It's good to hear. I love your passion. I love that this is set up. This is inconceivable only three years ago. Hard to imagine that this could exist three years ago, but it's not three years ago. It's 2021, and we have four months left. You need to find the beautiful stories. You need to share the beautiful stories. You need to know people's name. You need to know why they care. They need to know that you care about them, and then they need to know why you care about them, and therefore, it's important they understand what's at stake here at Gundramigan and around the country, or else... We will be here in four months. I'll come back for it. I'll burn up some more carbon and fly through the air from Chicago just for December 31st. I'll come here for New Year's instead of celebrating it with my family and friends. And we'll come here and we'll hear a speech that sounds like this. This is a dark day for Gundramigen. It's a dark day for Bavaria. This is a dark day for Germany. And it's a dark future for Europe. So what's it going to be? I hear people say that Germans are a little shy. You don't want to be rude. Well, let me tell you, you may be shy, but everywhere in the world, people are interested in sharing a little bit about themselves, sharing their name, getting to know why you're in their corner of the world with such a concern on your heart. So please, and sorry, sorry Bjorn for telling this story because, um, you know, you would think maybe we should have turned around and skipped this event and gone back and figured out the name of every single person in the village, got an entire village portrait right there in that farming town. But I thought we needed to share this story. All of you have to be the tellers of these stories. And before you tell them, you have to find them. Go out, find the people who love these plants, make their voices known, find the surprising aspects of their story, how they ended up living next to a nuclear plant, why they're still there, why they love nuclear, why they don't like nuclear if they live next to a nuclear plant for decades and don't like it. That may be a very interesting truth you find. You may unlock the key to an entire type of thinking if you can figure out why somebody could live next to a nuclear plant and not like it. 
And if you ask them what's beautiful about your life by the nuclear plant, you will come up with the authentic stories that will allow us to have a party on December 31st to celebrate a new year that's a brighter th future than we thought possible today. And I think, I think if we all get over our shyness, our awkwardness, and we find those stories, we will write a new one for Germany, for Europe, and for the world.